We purchased our XJ Cherokee at 94,000 miles. It was a good runner. We're now at 175,000 miles. And at around 125,000 miles, we started to hear a knocking noise in the engine or engine-driven accessories area. The noise occurs when the engine is cold predominantly, but not always cold. Sometimes it occurs when the engine's warmed up, but it's intermittent, which is really inconsistent for a major engine knock. Before tearing into the engine or condemning the condition of the engine itself, we're going to do some diagnostic tests that will confirm and pinpoint the source of the engine noise and the possible cause. At this point, we're not ruling out tune-related problems, possibly dirty injectors that are sending off the fuel trim and intermittently causing a lean knock in given cylinders. That's a possibility. Of course, we're not ruling out an internal engine noise. The 4-liter Jeep engine is developing a reputation for piston slap and piston skirt failure. Some of these later engines have actually had catastrophic failures related to a cracked or broken piston skirt. The culprit is supposedly the short skirts of the pistons, but this is unlikely since most modern engines have short skirt pistons. What is of concern to me, however, is the fact that this engine does not use a knock sensor. If the fuel trim is such that one or more cylinders are running in a lean condition, enough to cause detonation, the engine may still be below the threshold for throwing an engine check code. A driver in this case is unaware of the existence of a lean condition in one or more cylinders. And the end result is the engine develops severe problems like a broken piston skirt. So let's get started. To pinpoint the knocking noise, we need a diagnostic tool capable of listening with precision to various areas of the engine and the engine driven accessories. Our tool of choice is a Steelman chassis ear, although this same test as you will see can be performed with a stethoscope or something as simple as a tube of conduit or copper tubing. What I like about the Steelman tool is the six channels that you can play to pinpoint the sound or make comparisons between one area of noise and another. Each of these clips plug into a switch control and the headphones connected to this control panel will give you a sense for the intensity of the knock and the area of the knock. Also in use is a decibel gauge, which has an added feature for probing without the clips and getting a pinpoint analysis of noises. This device can be held in this manner and transmits the noise to the headphone set. You can use this in areas like fuel injectors and literally listen in on the performance of a fuel injection system. Let's begin by testing the engine for ambient noise. We'll start it up and listen to what we would normally hear without the amplification of the Steelman tool. The ambient noise is very hard to pinpoint, almost impossible to tell where the sound is emanating from. It seems like the middle of the engine block. This noise could be easily mistaken for a piston slap.
Unlike the piston pin noise, there's no double wrap when you tip into the throttle. We'll now use the Steelman chassis ear and go through each of the six channels to see if we can localize the noise. The Steelman chassis ear is hooked up to six strategic places on the engine. Red is hooked up to the base of the dipstick tube near the oil pan to pick up sounds from the oil pan including engine lower bearings, main end rods, any noises around the oil pump. At the distributor clamp bolt, the green clamp is connected. At this valve cover stud, the white lead is connected. The pink clamp is connected at the power steering pump housing to pick up noises from the power steering pump and adjacent engine driven accessories. The blue lead is connected to the bracket for the air conditioner. This picks up upper cylinder and engine bracket noise. And the six connector is hooked to the water pump flange, which will pick up timing cover and front of the engine noises. Each of these wire plugs is color-coded so that the control knob can switch to each of the zones in the engine. The Steelman headphone set is plugged into the control unit, picking up each of the zones as the control knob is switched between the color-coded clamps. Before starting the engine, make certain that all of the cabling is out of harm's way and in no way can get caught up in the fan, pulleys, or any of the moving parts of the front of the engine. We'll start with red at the base of the dipstick tube near the oil pan. This is the noise. Compare that sound with green, the distributor clamp bolt. Now we'll listen for white, the valve cover stud, or upper valve train. Now we'll move to the left-hand side of the engine. Facing forward, this is the power steering pump housing. Now the AC bracket on the right-hand side of the engine. And finally, yellow, which is the water pump flange or close to the timing cover, listening for timing chain noise or possible scratching against the timing cover by the chain. It's not the AC bracket, it's not the valve cover stud. There is some noise at the distributor clamp bolt, and there is some noise at the base of the dipstick tube near the oil pan. The loudest point though seems like the water pump flange, which is close to the timing cover. In the interest of pinpointing the sound further, will isolate the noise to the timing cover itself. Let's shut the engine off and reposition one of the clamps. So now the probe is hooked up to the timing cover area. In this channel, the yellow channel, will be monitoring the noise coming from the timing cover. 
We'll start the engine. Number five cylinder is quite loud. We're going to pull the number five spark plug wire off to take the load off that cylinder and see if that has an impact on the noise. We're going to move on to the probe tester that has the decibel meter to probe individual areas of the engine and the fuel injectors. After extensive sonic testing of this engine, since the noise is intermittent and poses no immediate hazard for the engine, in fact this noise has gone on for 50,000 miles now, we're going to move on to some products that might clean up the valve train and quiet it down. We'll do some engine tuning with seafoam and injector cleaning with the SUR&R cleaning system, pressure testing, and diagnostic tools.